All right, so back at it. Um, remember in thermodynamics, one of the big questions we wanna answer is will some process be spontaneous? That is, will it happen with outside intervention? And just this last lecture, we learned this kind of new value, this Gibbs free energy, and we said that it was equal to the change in enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in the entropy. And so this is all based on the system, so we don't have to look at the surroundings, uh, which is really nice. And so we learned that in order to be spontaneous, this must this uh, delta G must be negative, right? So must be negative to be spontaneous, spontaneous, right? And so we can see that delta G depends on delta H, T, and delta S. So whether a reaction is going to be spontaneous or not, it depends on the change in enthalpy, the temperature, and the change in entropy. And so we'll take a look at different scenarios and determine whether something is spontaneous or not. So let's take a look at first the possible signs of all of these things. Um, so enthalpy, this, can, this number can be positive or negative, right? Depending on whether it's an endothermic or an exothermic reaction. Uh, this delta or this T has to be a positive number. It's, it's in Kelvin and you can't have negative temperatures in Kelvin. So this number is always going to be positive. And then finally, this delta S can be positive or negative depending on whether the system gains entropy or loses entropy. So let's take a look at some scenarios. So on one this side, we'll go delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Cool. So let's take a look at some things that favor spontaneity and some things that disfavor spontaneity, right? So um, overall, again, we want this guy to be negative, right? So we'll say this side is spontaneous. And then this side, we'll take a look at what if it's positive, um, and then it'll go non-spontaneous. So in order to make delta G negative, we want delta H to be negative, right? If it equals a negative number, it's more likely to be negative. And so this is an exothermic reaction. And then in non-spontaneous size, this would then be positive, right? So that would be endothermic. The T, we said the T is not going to change, so we'll just leave that alone. And then we think about this delta S here, delta S. We want delta G to be negative overall, so you might think delta S should be negative in here, but you have this negative sign right here. So if you make delta S a negative, a negative times a negative is a positive. And so we actually want delta S to remain positive here in order to get a negative uh, T delta S and thus a more likely a negative delta G. And so this would be uh, delta S being positive would be the system gains entropy. And then over here, right, if we're talking about non-spontaneous, this would then be a negative. Uh, so system loses entropy. Cool. 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 And so from here, we can see that certain factors favor spontaneity or favor dispon or non-spontaneous process, right? So spontaneity, the things that favor spontaneity are exothermic reactions and an increase in the delta S of the system, right? So. In order for things to be more likely to be spontaneous, they're generally exothermic and they have an increase in the delta H or the delta S of the system. And so you can see when these two things are true, when you have an exothermic reaction that also gains entropy, your reaction will always be spontaneous because you've got a negative here and then this ends up being a positive, but then the overall number is a negative. So you've got a negative plus a negative which ends up being a negative. And so it's always spontaneous, right? When we're talking about non-spontaneity or non-spontaneous, 
Yeah, we'll go with spontaneous on this side too. And so the things that disfavor spontaneity are going to be endothermic reactions. All right, so they're gaining energy and a loss in entropy of the system. All right, so you can see when this numerical value is positive and this guy here is negative, it makes it a positive overall. A positive number plus a positive number will always be a positive number. So your reaction will always be non-spontaneous. So in these two cases, it's, it's pretty easy to tell when you plug in the positive and negative numbers what the overall sign of delta G is going to be and whether it's going to be spontaneous or non-spontaneous, right? So um, if you have exothermic and a gain in entropy of the system, always spontaneous. If you have endothermic and a loss of entropy in the system, always non-spontaneous. But let's take a look at something in between, something like what about... an exothermic reaction, right, that loses entropy, right? So let's take a look at our equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, right? And again, we want to figure out what this sign is going to be. That's what we want. We want the sign because if we get a negative number here, it's going to be spontaneous. If we get a positive number, it's going to be non-spontaneous, right? So that's what we want to figure out. And so from our previous notes, we can see that exothermics generally favor spontaneity. And that makes sense because exothermic reactions will have a negative delta H. So it's more likely that delta G will be negative as well. And then here it loses entropy and as we saw before loss of entropy is going to actually disfavor spontaneity so we've got kind of competing things here uh, we've got a favoring spontaneity from the um, delta h and a disfavoring spontaneity from the delta S. So what's the overall sign gonna be here, right? And so if this guy right here is negative, this part right here is, is a negative right here. And so we're multiplying a negative times a negative. And so it ends up being a positive. So if you think about this, it's gonna be some negative number minus some negative number and then the sign of the overall delta G, we don't know, right? But what you can tell, um, the one variable that you're going to want to pay attention to here is this temperature, the temperature. And so it's going to be dependent upon the temperature, right? So this overall number can be positive or negative. It depends which one of these components is bigger. This right here is the negative component and this right here is the positive component so the sum of these two numbers can be negative or positive depending on which is larger so for example you can have negative five minus a negative one, you get a negative four. That's obviously a negative number. That would be a spontaneous reaction. And then if we have negative five minus something like a negative 11, it's actually a positive six. So that'd be non-spontaneous, right? So it depends which one is bigger, which value is bigger, this delta H or this T delta S. And so another thing we can note here, and very important here, is that the size of T delta S depends, yeah, it depends on the sign of delta S and delta H, but those are pretty fixed things. The other thing it depends on is the temperature. Depends on the temperature, right? So as 
temperature increases, T delta S increases and vice versa as temperature decreases, T delta S also decreases. So the way you kind of want to think about this, is this process going to be spontaneous or non-spontaneous when you have things that favor and disfavor spontaneity? The correct answer is it depends on the temperature. At high temperatures, it might be spontaneous or non-spontaneous, and at low temperatures, you might get the other value. So again, let's just rewrite this. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And then let's take a look at a scenario of high, high temperature, high temperature. So this number again in our example here is going to be some negative number, right? And then overall, we're just going to basically come, let's say, and then the overall sign here is going to be some positive number. Now, since we have high temperature, that means that this component is going to be pretty big. And so kind of what we say here is that we have this negative number from the delta H plus, since this temperature is high, a big positive number. All right. So if you have a small negative plus a big positive, your end result is a positive number. And if you have a positive delta G, you have a non-spontaneous process, right? So since temperature is high, uh, this negative T delta S is high. This part is the positive component. And so you have a negative number plus a big positive number. You get a positive number overall. So it's non-spontaneous, right? So what I kind of drew here, this was a small negative number plus a big positive number, right? Overall equals a positive number. So that's one scenario. The other scenario would be low temperature. So again, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. We said in our example, this guy right here is going to be a negative number, right? This over here represents our positive number. But since we have low temperature, this the value of T here is small, and thus the value of T delta S is small. So you can think of this as plus kind of some tiny little, little number, right? So you kind of have a big negative plus a small positive, right? So if you have a big negative number plus a small positive number, what you end up with is a negative number overall. And if delta G is negative, the process is spontaneous. All right, so you want to go ahead and run through the same scenarios, except now think about an endothermic reaction with a gain in entropy. Right. Think about what these values would be and think about whether it's going to be spontaneous at high temperature and if it's going to be spontaneous at low temperature. Go ahead and do that on your own. But of course, in chemistry, right, we just don't want to know is something going to be spontaneous, is something not going to be spontaneous. We want to know um, how spontaneous is going to be and what temperature is it going to be spontaneous or non-spontaneous. So you see here we can switch high to low. That's a qualitative approach, right? We're just saying high, low. We're not giving exact value. You want to do it quantitatively too. So we want to know at what temperature is this going to be spontaneous. So let's take a look at an example of that. So for example, carbon tetrachloride can turn into graphite, which is just solid carbon, and chlorine gas. Is this process spontaneous? So we can take a look at the delta H and the delta S. Let's take a first uh, look at a qualitative approach, and then we'll take a look at a quantitative approach. So at first, I'm just going to tell you that this delta H is positive and that this delta S is positive. So we've got an endothermic reaction that gains entropy. Is this going to be spontaneous at low or high temperatures? Let's take a look. 
So here we have delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And so if we plug in this positive component here, that's going to end up making this number some positive. And then if we think about this positive number over here, that's actually going to end up making this whole thing negative, negative, right? So you've got a positive number plus a negative number. So whether you want to know whether it's going to be spontaneous or not, you want to think about what the effect of T is. As T increases, the negative number increases and thus delta G goes towards a more negative number, right? That's the negative component. So as the negative number gets more and more negative, um, delta G becomes more and more negative. So this guy right here, we can tell from a qualitative approach, this will be spontaneous at high temperatures, at high temperatures, because we want this delta T to be large, or we want this T to be large, so this T delta S is large, and so this negative component here is large. So that's the qual or qualitative approach. We can also take a quantitative approach if I give you these exact numerical values. So this is 95.7 kilojoules for the delta H, and this is 142.2 joules per Kelvin, right? So again, pay attention to the units. This is kilojoules, this is joules per Kelvin. Um, enthalpy is a measure of heat transfer. Entropy is a, basically a measure of dispersion of energy. So that's the qualitative approach that we just take, took a look at. Another quantitative approach would be what temperature is it going to be spontaneous? So at what T is it spontaneous? Well, let's take a look again at our equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And this is essentially just a plug and chug type of problem you know that this delta G in order for it to be spontaneous, because that's what we want, this must be a negative number, right? And so we can say that delta G is less than or equal to zero in order for this to be spontaneous. And then we'll just say that it's equal to uh, zero because that's gonna make uh, the math easier. With this negative sign, when you multiply by negatives, you gotta switch the, the value of this, this less than sign, and so that gets a little confusing. Um, so you can just switch to equals to zero. So we'll plug this delta G equals zero right into here. So we have zero equals that. What's the value of my delta H? Well, I just look it up and I just plug it in. There's that 95 kilojoules right there. So 95.7 kilojoules right here. Plug that in from up there. And then minus T. My T is my unknown. I don't know what the value is. That's what I want. And then the delta S is the last thing I have to plug in. So what's my value for delta S? Well, here it is right there, 142.2 joules per Kelvin. So I just plug that right into there. I can see that the Kelvin part is gonna cancel out. So I will get joules minus joules. You just have to be careful right here, right? One of these is in kilojoules. One of them is in joules. It doesn't matter which one you convert, but you've gotta convert one of them so that they speak in the same unit, right? When you're subtracting things, both of them have to be in kilojoules or both of them have to be in joules, whichever one you want. And then if you go ahead and do the algebraic math, here, so you'll subtract the 95.7, multiply by negative one, and then divide by the 142 after you've converted. Uh, your temperature ends up being 673 Kelvin. So, right, again, what this tells you is that at temperatures of 673 Kelvin or above, since this is a high temperature um, spontaneous process, this process will be spontaneous below these Below this temperature, the process will be non-spontaneous. Um, I really like this chart from the book right here. It tells you all the scenarios. So again, in order for something to be spontaneous, 
delta G has to be a negative number or zero, right? And so you can take a look at the different cases you have where entropy increases or entropy decreases and an endothermic and an exothermic reaction. You can see the two cases that we looked at at the beginning, they're gonna be processes spontaneous at any temperature for an exothermic reaction that increases entropy and it's gonna be non-spontaneous at any temperature for any reaction that is endothermic and has a decrease in entropy. And then the two cases in between, it's gonna depend on temperature, right? And so I guess in theory, you could just memorize this chart. Really what you wanna use is this delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Think about the sign here, think about the sign here, and then think about whether your temperature is high or low and what effect that has on this T delta S value overall.